hey, I want to give you uh, landowners a, just a tiny little piece of information, and, um, but I want you to know and understand this because I think it matters. When you get ready to sell a piece of property and you uh, sign a listing agreement with, uh, with uh, the agent and the, the brokerage that's representing your property, whether it's mine or anybody else's, um, there's most likely in that listing agreement uh, a paragraph or a few sentences in, in there that we refer to as the, the protected period. And usually it basically says something like, you know, hey, if uh, an agreement to uh, purchase this property comes into play after, within a certain period of time after this listing agreement expires, and it's someone that we have uh, shown the property to, this is the broker speaking, I was reading his paragraph for you, so to speak, and it's someone that we have shown this property to, then we're entitled to that, that sales commission. That's straight up legitimate. Every real estate company probably has a protected period or some kind of protected agreement in their uh, their business. Nothing wrong with that. Makes good sense. If a real estate company, uh, you know, has got your property listed and they show it to somebody, you know, and th you know, three weeks later the listing agreement expires and a couple weeks later that guy comes back. Maybe he's been working offshore or uh, he's getting some things right on his own end financially or they sell a house in Montana and they're moving, you know, down here to Missouri or wherever. And he calls you back and go, hey, that property I looked at, I'm ready to make an offer, make a deal on that. Um, you know, I, I want to want to proceed with that. Or they have gotten to know the owners um, because a lot of times the owners are involved in, in deals and showing property, especially larger tracks. And they call the owner and go, hey, that property I looked at, I'm ready to, to go ahead and make a deal on it. Well, that broker has earned that commission because he's the one that who's advertising and marketing found that buyer he's the one that went out there and showed him and just because a little bit of time went by the leasing agreement expired and that guy comes along and makes a deal hey that's just that's just the timing of it, it makes perfect sense uh, you know I understand that agree with that it should be that way very rarely comes into play here's the point I want to make to you if you're a landowner when you have a listing agreement that you're about to sign to list a piece of property any kind of land house commercial building whatever be sure you understand that protected period. In my opinion, this is Pat Porter talking to you as a real estate broker. In my opinion, that protected period ought to be a short period of time. Two, three months is kind of standard for us. That's what ours is. I think ours on our rec land listing agreements, I think it's 90 days. That's a that's a reasonable amount of time. Um, and, and it also needs to apply to people who that broker, that agent has actually shown the property to, not just maybe sent a flyer to, or uh, a guy looked at it on the internet, or he responded to a Facebook ad, a post or something. That broker needs to have engaged that buyer and shown that property to him for that person to be what we call, you know, the protected uh, buyer during that protected time. So keep that in mind. I'll tell you why I bring this up dealing with some people that have some property they want us to list and sell and they've explained to me the the protection period of a previous listing they had i'm not going to give you too many details because i don't want to disclose who it is where it is what it is but just trust me when i say it is a stupid amount of time stupid in my opinion highly unreasonable amount of time and but it's in the listing agreement that they signed um, and then they got a list of the people that are protected and it's everybody that that had gotten a, a flyer on this property. Well, folks, I can send out mass letters. I can send out a 500 letters to people, uh, maybe in three or four parishes about a, or counties about a property we have for sale. That in no way ought to protect those people for my good. I, I did not secure them as potential buyers. I just marketed it to them. So all that said, everybody, every broker's got their own way of doing it. Most are going to be pretty standard, pretty reasonable, all going to differ just a little bit. They are good. It is a good policy, a good provision because it protects us and what we do, especially against some people that are just flat unscrupulous. I mean, they're kind of people that kick puppies when they were kids and now they're adults. They want to cheat you out of every dime. So that's in there for a reason. 
but look at it close and if you think that time is unreasonable it's some long extended year or more period of time put your foot down have him change that that's something that is completely negotiable you're not bound to that it's not some set in stone thing you can negotiate that and go no i think this is a little too long and and have that changed look for it it's in the print and your listing agreements that most people don't read but it's there so anyway just a tip for you um watch out for that and make sure that it's reasonable not uh, not uh onerous or or prohibitive to protect you and and help you get your property sold whether it be during the first term of a listing or sometime down the road so anyway there you go bye